August 28, Prayer for Restoration Lord, remember what has happened to us. See how we have been disgraced. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our homes to foreigners. We are orphaned and fatherless. Our mothers are widowed. We have to pay for water to drink, and even firewood is expensive. Those who pursue us are at our heels. We are exhausted but are given no rest. We submitted to Egypt and Assyria to get enough food to survive. Our ancestors sinned, but they have died, and we are suffering the punishment they deserved. Slaves have now become our masters. There is no one left to rescue us. We hunt for food at the risk of our lives, for violence rules the countryside. The famine has blackened our skin as though baked in an oven. Our enemies rape the women in Jerusalem and the young girls in all the towns of Judah. Our princes are being hanged by their thumbs, and our elders are treated with contempt. Young men are led away to work at millstones, and boys stagger under heavy loads of wood. The elders no longer sit in the city gates. The young men no longer dance and sing. Joy has left our hearts. Our dancing has turned to mourning. The garlands have fallen from our heads. Weep for us because we have sinned. Our hearts are sick and weary, and our eyes grow dim with tears, for Jerusalem is empty and desolate, a place haunted by jackals. But, Lord, you remain the same forever. Your throne continues from generation to generation. Why do you continue to forget us? Why have you abandoned us for so long? Restore us, O Lord, and bring us back to you again. Give us back the joys we once had. Or have you utterly rejected us? Are you angry with us still? The Prophecy of Obadiah This is the vision that the Sovereign Lord revealed to Obadiah concerning the land of Edom. Edom's judgment announced. We have heard a message from the Lord that an ambassador was sent to the nations to say, Get ready, everyone. Let's assemble our armies and attack Edom. The Lord says to Edom, I will cut you down to size among the nations. You will be greatly despised. You have been deceived by your own pride because you live in a rock fortress and make your home high in the mountains. Who can ever reach us way up here? you ask boastfully. But even if you soar as high as eagles and build your nest among the stars, I will bring you crashing down, says the Lord. If thieves came at night and robbed you, what a disaster awaits you. They would not take everything. Those who harvest grapes always leave a few for the poor. But your enemies will wipe you out completely. Every nook and cranny of Edom will be searched and looted. Every treasure will be found and taken. All your allies will turn against you. They will help to chase you from your land. They will promise you peace while plotting to deceive and destroy you. Your trusted friends will set traps for you, and you won't even know about it. At that time, not a single wise person will be left in the whole land of Edom, says the Lord. For on the mountains of Edom, I will destroy everyone who has understanding. The mightiest warriors of Teman will be terrified, and everyone on the mountains of Edom will be cut down in the slaughter. Reasons for Edom's Punishment Because of the violence you did to your close relatives in Israel, you will be filled with shame and destroyed forever. When they were invaded, you stood aloof, refusing to help them. Foreign invaders carried off their wealth and cast lots to divide up Jerusalem, but you acted like one of Israel's enemies. You should not have gloated when they exiled your relatives to distant lands. You should not have rejoiced when the people of Judah suffered such misfortune. You should not have spoken arrogantly in that terrible time of trouble. You should not have plundered the land of Israel when they were suffering such calamity. You should not have gloated over their destruction when they were suffering such calamity. You should not have seized their wealth when they were suffering such calamity. You should not have stood at the crossroads, killing those who tried to escape. You should not have captured the survivors and handed them over in their terrible time of trouble. Edom destroyed, Israel restored. The day is near when I, the Lord, will judge all godless nations. As you have done to Israel, so it will be done to you. All your evil deeds will fall back on your own heads. Just as you swallowed up my people on my holy mountain, so you and the surrounding nations will swallow the punishment I pour out on you. 
Yes, all you nations will drink and stagger and disappear from history. But Jerusalem will become a refuge for those who escape. It will be a holy place, and the people of Israel will come back to reclaim their inheritance. The people of Israel will be a raging fire, and Edom a field of dry stubble. The descendants of Joseph will be a flame, roaring across the field, devouring everything. There will be no survivors in Edom. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then my people living in the Negev will occupy the mountains of Edom. Those living in the foothills of Judah will possess the Philistine plains and take over the fields of Ephraim and Samaria. And the people of Benjamin will occupy the land of Gilead. The exiles of Israel will return to their land and occupy the Phoenician coast as far north as Zarephath. The captives from Jerusalem exiled in the north will return home and resettle the towns of the Negev. Those who have been rescued will go up to Mount Zion in Jerusalem to rule over the mountains of Edom, and the Lord himself will be king. Gedaliah governs in Judah. Then King Nebuchadnezzar appointed Gedaliah son of Ahikam and grandson of Shaphan as governor over the people he had left in Judah. When all the army commanders and their men learned that the king of Babylon had appointed Gedaliah as governor, they went to see him at Mizpah. These included Ishmael son of Nethaniah, Johanan son of Korea, Siraiah son of Tanamuth the Netophathite, and Jezaniah son of the Maacathite, and all their men. Gedaliah vowed to them that the Babylonian officials meant them no harm. Don't be afraid of them. Live in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and all will go well for you, he promised. But in mid-autumn of that year, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, and grandson of Elishama, who was of the royal family, went to Mizpah with ten men and killed Gedaliah. He also killed all the Judeans and Babylonians who were with Gedaliah at Mizpah. Then all the people of Judah, from the least to the greatest, as well as the army commanders, fled in panic to Egypt, for they were afraid of what the Babylonians would do to them. The leaders of the Judean guerrilla bands in the countryside heard that the king of Babylon had appointed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, as governor over the poor people who were left behind in Judah, the men, women, and children who hadn't been exiled to Babylon. So they went to see Gedaliah at Mizpah. These included Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, Johanan and Jonathan, sons of Korea, Siraiah, son of Tanamuth, the sons of Ephi, the Netophathite, Jezaniah, son of the Maacathite, and all their men. Gedaliah vowed to them that the Babylonians meant them no harm. Don't be afraid to serve them. Live in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and all will go well for you, he promised. As for me, I will stay at Mizpah to represent you before the Babylonians who come to meet with us. Settle in the towns you have taken and live off the land. Harvest the grapes and summer fruits and olives and store them away. When the Judeans in Moab, Ammon, Edom, and the other nearby countries heard that the king of Babylon had left a few people in Judah and that Gedaliah was the governor, they began to return to Judah from the places to which they had fled. They stopped at Mizpah to meet with Gedaliah and then went into the Judean countryside to gather a great harvest of grapes and other crops. A Plot Against Gedaliah Soon after this, Johanan, son of Korea, and the other guerrilla leaders came to Gedaliah at Mizpah. They said to him, Did you know that Baalis, king of Ammon, has sent Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, to assassinate you? But Gedaliah refused to believe them. Later, Johanan had a private conference with Gedaliah and volunteered to kill Ishmael secretly. Why should we let him come and murder you? Johanan asked. What will happen then to the Judeans who have returned? Why should the few of us who are still left be scattered and lost? But Gedaliah said to Johanan, I forbid you to do any such thing, for you are lying about Ishmael. The Murder of Gedaliah But in mid-autumn, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah and grandson of Elishama, who was a member of the royal family and had been one of the king's high officials, went to Mizpah with ten men to meet Gedaliah. While they were eating together, Ishmael and his ten men suddenly jumped up, drew their swords, and killed Gedaliah, whom the king of Babylon had appointed governor. Ishmael also killed all the Judeans and the Babylonian soldiers who were with Gedaliah at Mizpah. The next day, before anyone had heard about Gedaliah's murder, eighty men arrived from Shechem, Shiloh, and Samaria to worship at the temple of the Lord. They had shaved off their beards, torn their clothes, and cut themselves, and had brought along grain offerings and frankincense. Ishmael left Mizpah to meet them, weeping as he went. When he reached them, he said, Oh, come and see what has happened to Gedaliah. 
But as soon as they were all inside the town, Ishmael and his men killed all but ten of them and threw their bodies into a cistern. The other ten had talked Ishmael into letting them go by promising to bring him their stores of wheat, barley, olive oil, and honey that they had hidden away. The cistern where Ishmael dumped the bodies of the men he murdered was the large one dug by King Asa when he fortified Mizpah to protect himself against King Basha of Israel. Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, filled it with corpses. Then Ishmael made captives of the king's daughters and the other people who had been left under Gedaliah's care in Mizpah by Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard. Taking them with him, he started back toward the land of Ammon. But when Johanan, son of Korea, and the other guerrilla leaders heard about Ishmael's crimes, they took all their men and set out to stop him. They caught up with him at the large pool near Gibeon. The people Ishmael had captured shouted for joy when they saw Johanan and the other guerrilla leaders, and all the captives from Mizpah escaped and began to help Johanan. Meanwhile, Ishmael and eight of his men escaped from Johanan into the land of Ammon. Then Johanan, son of Korea, and the other guerrilla leaders took all the people they had rescued in Gibeon, the soldiers, women, children, and court officials whom Ishmael had captured after he killed Gedaliah. They took them all to the village of Giruth Kimham, near Bethlehem, where they prepared to leave for Egypt. They were afraid of what the Babylonians would do when they heard that Ishmael had killed Gedaliah, the governor appointed by the Babylonian king.